Okay. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Keto Rewind. I'm Jess, and I have my oldest daughter here <laughs> helping me make tonight's dinner. Um, it's a another day of the Keto Rewind Total Carb Challenge and a full day of eating. And um, <laughs> you want to say who you are? Uh-huh. Who are I you? I am Lou. You're Lou? <laughs> and how old are you? I'm six years old. So anyways, <laughs> um, you're going to help me make me the meatloaf today. Yes. But before we get into that, I want to say if you're interested in my Keto Rewind Clean 30 Challenge, which is another 30-day meal plan, I'll put that uh, link in the cards, whichever corner that is. <laughs> And, um, but this one is the total carb challenge where the whole month of August, we are tracking total carbs, not net carbs. Um, and that's a challenge for me because I lost 125 pounds using the net carbs, but I have nine pounds left to go and I'm using the total carb challenge to hopefully get me to my goal weight. Um, and to just keep my journey fresh and new and learning. And that's what this journey is all about. So I'm going to start with an earlier um, our lunch that we had earlier and then our snack and then we will be kick off the dinner right after that so um, we'll be right back and the finished product three eggs fried in butter and three slices of bacon they're real thin um, and this is the bacon that we made um, ourselves so I will log this into my macros and here is lunch today okay well it's time to make dinner it is now 507 we don't eat till around six o'clock ish so um, we're gonna go ahead and make this and stick in the oven and let it you know, work. And I'm making three meatloaves, so um, don't pay attention to the quantities. <laughs> um, I, we're gonna do a uh, meatloaf croutons. If, you, if you've seen my Clean 30 challenge, you'll know what the meatloaf croutons are. So um, we wanted enough for leftovers and it's easy to just reheat this and use for lunches. So we're gonna make three loaves. Um, but this is a great idea for meal prep. These freeze well. Um, so anyways, we're going to get started and Lou is going to help me um, add all my spices. <laughs> um, let's start making the meatloaf. The first thing we're going to do is start with, um, I'm going to put the meat at the bottom of my pan and I'm going to change the camera angle around so that you can see what we're going to do. Um, but I'm going to roughly use six and a half ish pounds of meat. I'm making three loaves, so I want three two pound loaves, if that makes any sense at all. And instead of using breadcrumbs, the ingredient is gonna be almond flour and Parmesan cheese and spices. So um, let's get to it. I do have this recipe already on my, I've probably made two or three videos at least on my YouTube channel. So I'll put a link to my um, website where is the written recipe. And also um, you can go back and watch other versions of this. So let's get started. Let's move that camera around. Okay, so I'm going to dump this in here. The first thing, we take off our, our jewelry, and that's because it's yucky. Um, you don't have to really touch any of the, the meat, but just in case, I don't want your pretty watch to get anything <laughs> on it. So first things first, take off your jewelry when you're making meatloaf. Let me move this closer so they can see it. <laughs> I'm going to touch the meat. Okay. Um, you can touch the eggs. All right. I really want so to this, touch the meat. You want to touch the meat? No, I don't. Oh, it's like, it's yucky. I don't even like touching the meat. Um, <laughs> but this is 80-20 ground beef. Um, this is just what was on sale, so we grabbed it. Sometimes I'll use um, a higher fat. Sometimes I'll use a lower fat. So, But the most most of the time, I just use 80-20. See, that's all oh. blood. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Make sure you just don't get on your... Oh, I promise. Make sure you just don't just explode whenever you do this. <laughs> Good. Let me wash my hands real quick. So we have the meat already in the bowl, you see. <laughs> we are taking the eggs, so... And where do we get yeah. these eggs? We get these eggs from the egg farm. The egg farm. We got happy grass uh, pasture raised. Um, we actually see the hens that these uh, eggs come from. Um, and they're, we buy a lot of eggs. So it's nice. it's a nice treat. They're very good for you. <laughs> they are very good for you. <laughs> so can I crack the egg? Yes. Yeah, so we did six pounds of meat, so we need six eggs. Okay. Do you think let's let's put a let's have you crack into a bowl in case we have any shell? Yeah. <laughs> you if you're just doing this, make sure you grab
grab a bowl. <laughs> so we'll have you crack them into that. Wow, you got right on the counter. Bye, Dad. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Okay, so put the shell here, and we, can you count to six? Okay. I got one. I know. Okay, that was shoot. Two, right? Put it there. That was a shoot one. <laughs> it's no, not no, hit, it, hit it again. There you go. It's a practice. You gotta practice so you know how to cook. It's not right? even easy. <laughs> it's not easy. It's I e thought it was easy. <laughs> but it gets easier the more times you practice. So I got three. Yep, good job. So right. we're back. Now I'm gonna stir these eggs. What you see here I'm holding is it's an egg stir. So now let's get <laughs> on to getting our egg stirred. Alright, stir it up. Stick it in there and stir it. Don't be afraid of it. <laughs> yeah, stop. And I'm sipping on my coffee, my keto rewind black coffee with heavy whipping cream and collagen. She loves coffee. <laughs> and while she you get, coffee, by I the do way. love coffee. I really like it, but <laughs> you don't like coffee. <laughs> Since when? I got a sister, and she loves coffee already. Oh, she'll love anything. She's five. She doesn't know anything yet. <laughs> she says yum to everything. And whenever she's my age, she's gonna say, "Um, I think yum to everything." Still. <laughs> okay, so we got our beef. Ground beef here. I think I'm almost done starting. Okay. I'm going to give you this. As soon as that's done mixing, you can pour that in the bowl, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. So here you can have that. Pour Whoa. that. All right. So then I'll take this. Good job. Nice pouring. So, I think now we're going to do the spices, or probably we're doing Yep, so this is a one cup, let me bring it closer, careful, of almond flour. Dump it, don't touch the meat. Good job. Nice, oh, there's still some more. <laughs> Good job. Now just set that down, and we're going to get out our cheese next. And we're also going to do the cheese with nope, this Nope, we're going to choose oh, the cheese bye with bye. this one. We're and doing this the one. cheese. I'm so wrong right now. I thought we were doing the black one. <laughs> nope, that one's for the spices. This is just the, the I guess want to call it a filler. Okay. But this is parm grated Parmesan cheese. So dump that. I was just showing Great that. job. Now you can have the black one. This is a tablespoon. Yes. Right? I thought we were doing the black one for the cheese. <laughs> oh, we don't. We want way more cheese than that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is Italian seasoning. We're gonna make an Italian meatloaf. So can you? Can I have two of those in here? Well, okay. this even. Oh no, it doesn't fit. We're gonna have to use our hand. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> so I know about a tablespoon. There's one. Can I do the second one? <laughs> How about you do the um, garlic? Okay. I'll get a. I'll go get sorry a smaller about one. That. Don't say sorry. You didn't know. I'm gonna do the garlic. Yahoo! I think meatloaf is so good. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Yummy in your tummy? Yeah. Next, we're gonna do onion powder. So I need at least two teaspoons. So actually, no, we're gonna we want a tablespoon to so do three of them. So I'm gonna hold it and go like that so it makes it level. Now pour it. Ah! Let's do two more. You scoop it really good. Now shake it so all the top, so it's nice and flat. Good job. Two, you do it one more time, and this time you do it. There you go. Oh, don't touch the meat. Bye, Dad. I almost touched it. You were close. Whew, <laughs> dodged that one. Yeah, I dodged it. <laughs> you. Yeah. Hey, wanna do the garlic next? Okay, I'll do the garlic. I need three of these. So this is basically a tablespoon, but I'm using a teaspoon, obviously, because uh, we our tablespoon is too chubby to fit through the hole. 
All right, now let's go over this so we don't spill. There's nice. one. So a total would be a tablespoon, but, because remember, we're making six and a half pounds of meatloaf here, so adjust the spices. The, the recipe will be um, based off of one pound. So don't worry about trying to remember or write anything down. <laughs> Three, great job. You don't have to write anything down if you don't want to. <laughs> what, where's my, what's my website? Keto Rewind is my website. KetoRewind.com. Do you want to crack pepper? Okay. You know how to crack pepper. Yeah. So you put that down and you can crack some pepper. Now remember, don't Poop. touch, don't touch the meat, okay? Okay. Oh, <laughs> good job. That's a, you're like a pro. doesn't know how to crack pepper. Uh, your sister? No, I'm just kidding. She knows. Fresh pepper, fresh cracked pepper is the best, right? Yeah, even salt too. I don't really like pepper, but I eat it. <laughs> you like pepper, silly goose. Kidding, I like pepper, but I just like uh, three or two scoops or four, I should say. <laughs> three or two or four. And then the last ingredient is pink salt. Remember, I'm doing um, a lot of meatloaf here. So it looks like a lot, but it's not a lot. And the next thing is, I'm going to have to touch it <laughs> and mix it all up. <laughs> but I will need you to bring that over to me, please. Yeah. And I'm going to try not to make a big mess here. But here is the before. You know what All right, just sit it on the stove. That'll be perfect. Right here. <laughs> yeah, it's this way. I can just put that and on. And whenever you mix it, it's so gross. It is so gross. <laughs> and you're sticking your hands in it. I am. I'm surprised you don't like to do this. You always like to play in the sand and all kinds of crazy, yucky things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> At the beach. But, uh, it's not too far off from that, right? Yeah, we also... I'm like finding lots of dead fish at the beach, so. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so she's mixing it and I'm not, so I'm. Just... Hey, how about I tell you some stories? Is that tell me. Oh, I don't know about that. I think I'm being worried about what kind of stories you're going to tell. I'm going to tell. Kitty stories. Kitty stories? Well, this is a keto channel. Oh, uh, how about I tell keto stories? A keto story? Okay. <laughs> Do you like mommy better now that she's healthy and can play with you more? Yes. Because I don't I don't want mommy to not be healthy and not stay alive too long. I want to stay alive for longer and longer and longer. <laughs> See, that was a good story. That was a good story. And I used to be too tired to keep up with you. Yeah. And now I can keep up with you and your sister. Yes. And by the way, my daddy's healthy too. <laughs> He's been healthy. Mom is the one that had to get healthy. Actually, I All righty. I think we are ready to put this in the meatloaf pans. I had greased the meatloaf pans ahead of time with an avocado spray. So don't make, just make sure you uh, spray those in there. There is gonna be quite a bit of fat that's gonna cook out of this, but you don't want it to stick. I'm showing them the oil. Okay, and I think that's like an eight and a half. Be careful, the oil's gonna spill out. Honey, thank you. Um, I think that's an eight and a half by four size. Just a sizing reference. I'm gonna be right back. I'm just gonna grab my water. Okay. I left outside on accident. <laughs> okay, silly goose. Basically, you're just gonna cut se section this into like three lobes and eyeball roughly, you know, a third. And all right, I am back with my water. <laughs> Keto colors, like uh, I forgot what they're called. They're water, they're water flavored waters. We'll show them in a minute. You want to grab one right here? Okay. Can I put some what flavor on anything? Um, I think that was put in the cabinet. You just went instead. So this is um something. 
thing you can buy and it's keto. This is better than um on, lemonade please. and like hey, hold on. Okay. Okay, so this is the flavor I'm using. If you want to try it, just um come to New Hampshire. No, no, it's probably in their store. I'll link the below. Um this flavor is um blackberry and blueberry. And it's sweetened with stevia, so it's one of those just plain water flavors. Um, my kids love these, and they've been drinking them quite a bit. So I have that, that's one squirt is in this whole thing. So it's just a little flavor, and it gets them enjoying and loving on their water. So what do you think? What's your review of it? It's good, and but you also have to shake it so a little okay. bit. That's okay. I love it. Alrighty, we're going to pop these on the grill. And I basically took that meatloaf mixture and divide it into three loaves. So next we're going to bring it to the grill and um, prepare the roasted asparagus. Actually, you know what? We're going to do grilled asparagus. How about that? <laughs> How about that, I said. <laughs> now we're going to make the yummy, the yummy dessert. So we're going to make keto Swedish cheesecake. Um, this is a recipe that you don't need any fancy appliances. I'm going to show you because it makes it quick. But you can use a hand, you can do this recipe by hand, and you can use a traditional oven to bake it. I'm going to use my food processor, and then we're going to cook it in my Instant Pot, because this is camp. I want to be outside, I don't want to stay, I don't want the whole camp to get hot, that kind of thing. So, uh, let's get started making this Keto Swedish Cheesecake. You want to help me? Yes. Alright, let me hop down. Wow. <laughs> here, your stool is right here. Pop on up. I'm going to use this. Um, I have no idea how wide this is, but it fits inside the, the Instant Pot. It's a spring foam form pan, and so that's what we're going to put it in. Do you want to grease this for me? Okay. I'm going to give you some butter. Butter! <laughs> butter. How's <Good. Yeah. laughs> that? The cool... You're so weird. <laughs> um, the cool thing about this uh, cheesecake is it doesn't have a crust. So you're going to save a lot of carbs, making this a perfect dessert for the Total Carb Challenge. So I'm going to give you some butter, and I want you to smash it all in there everywhere. Make, okay. the, make a big mess in with there. With my hands? Yes, with your hands. Get in there, girl. Okay. Time. Okay. Time. The, the food police will be very upset that you're touching it with your hands, but... I say you can, and mom's rules are what matters, right? With the food police. Oh, those angry people that if you touch your food, they have a fit. Anyway, so I'm going to change the camera angle around, and we'll um, show you how to make this easy Swedish cheesecake. Okay, so we have the food processor right here. I have a scale to measure ingredients. You can use, um, I think measuring with a scale is so much easier. Um, good job. Break that off and make sure you get the sides too. Um, but measuring with the scale makes it really spot on when it comes to baking. You do not want to eyeball baking. <laughs> so first we're going to start off with the dry ingredients and then we'll throw in the wet. So we need 50 grams of almond flour. So first things first, I'm just getting a bowl here. Make sure you just know, um, you can touch your own food. <laughs> Don't listen to those angry humans. <laughs> Okay, so I have a scale here. We're getting 50 grams of almond flour, and this is just blanched almond flour. I'm gonna wash my hands after this. Right. Or is my hands gonna get dirtier and dirtier? No, you wanna wash it after that. All right, so we have 50 grams of almond flour. Next, I'm gonna put the sweetener in there. You can use any sweetener of choice, but I am a fan of Swerve, Lakanto, um, <laughs> Monk fruit, erythritol, and stevia is my preferred. I would. I, it's the only three I would use, and I like allulose a lot now too. All right, hey, good job. Hey, time to wash my hands. <laughs> Go wash those. No looking. <laughs> All 
All right, the next ingredient is swerve, and we need 75 grams. <laughs> you want to dump this in there? Yes. Please. All right. Is it okay if some gets out of the bowl? <laughs> Thank you. A pinch of pink salt. Can you give that a shake? All right. Whoa, that's good. Great job. That was actually perfect. <laughs> I'm thinking about a quarter teaspoon. And then we're gonna just pulse this together and then we're gonna add the wet. And now we're gonna add in our dry ingredients. I need 400 grams, so we need this to say 400. Do you know what a 400 looks like? 400. Zero, zero. I meant no. No? 400. Zero, zero. Can you tell me whenever we get there? I will help you do it, silly. Okay. So now scoop that until it says 400. So I think it's the whole jug. So let's put a big, big portion of it in there. Oh. 413, close enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> so 413 that. grams of cottage cheese. Hey, what are they cottage cheese on me? I'm gonna look it off for you. And because there's literally that much, I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in here and just count the whole contents of the jug. <laughs> All right, so the next thing is the fun one. We're gonna do eggs. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do eggs. All right, good job. Now go wash your hands, silly. They're all icky. Look at that! I didn't get anything dirty like last time. <laughs> hey, see, that's how much better you got. Practice makes perfect. All right, a hundred milliliters of heavy whipping cream. All right, just a splash, teaspoon of vanilla. It smells so good. <sighs> Lid, and we're just gonna pulse it till everything comes together. So you can do the hit the on button. All right. <laughs> okay, so if you don't have an instant pot, just put this in a regular pie dish, one of those nine-inch pie dishes. Bake it in the oven for 335 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes. I'm going to use the Instant Pot, so I'm going to use the Springform pan that fits inside my 8-quart um, my Instant Pot, which you can see in the back corner over there, and I'm going to cook it for 28 minutes. And the grease smells delicious. The grease that's butter. It's butter, silly. <laughs> but it does smell delicious. I'm going to lick it up. So I <laughs> grease, or I should say, Lou greased this with butter, and we're just going to pour this, we put the camera down, into the Springform pan. Okay, so here is, I just poured it in the spring form pan. <laughs> and we're going to bring it over to the Instant Pot and put it on high pressure. This is the Instant Pot. <laughs> instant Pot. This oh. is an 8-quart. Um, you would probably, I don't know if the 6-quart would fit this pan. You'd have to resize your pan. <laughs> but I put the little... Um, thing down below and I must just put a cup of water in here and then place the um, you want to get the water for me here let me give you a cup so Lou is gonna put a cup of water <laughs> so much anxiety with the spilling <laughs> all the moms know what I'm going through right now oh up oh, oh, let me help you I know a good try though all right thank you sweetheart so we're gonna put a cup of water down in there and then we're gonna put the cheesecake pan Okay, so fun fact, you're going to want to make a handle so that you can get the cheesecake pan out of there once it's done. Once it's, once it's really hot, <laughs> you're not going to want to touch it. So I make a, a handle that out of aluminum foil that, it, that will just help pick up the cheesecake pan right out of there. So um, just a big strip that you just fold down a bunch of times um, and get it to about an inch thick and several layers thick, you know, folding it, folding it, and folding it. And you're going to basically just put that on the bottom of the pan so you have a handle to pull it out of there with. So um, I'll give you a quick demonstration. Okay, so basically this is how easy it is to make this handle. Um, see? So now you can pull it right out of there and not 
worry. <laughs> and then just push your handles down into the food, I'm sorry, into the gap between the pan. Um, this way you can grab them when you're, all, when you're ready for them. And put the lid on and cook as usual. Okay, so the meatloaf is on the Traeger. We, it is almost to temperature. It's 363 degrees, but we have it set to 375. So that's, I think, as high as it goes. Um, but it cooks it so nicely, it uses wood pellets. And real quick, there you go, look at that. Yum, right? So those are in there cooking. <laughs> and I'm going to grill our asparagus. So I have trimmed the bottoms already off. I left the little uh, elastic on because it just makes it easier to carry um, out here. Um, so right before the grill, um, I will pull this all off, but all I'm going to do is on the grill, put avocado oil. And you're gonna wanna measure your oil. <laughs> um, and then pink salt. So, but like I said, these are already trimmed. They're pretty skinny. Um, when I grill asparagus, I like them a little thinner so they don't take so long to cook. Um, but make sure you trim at least the bottoms were probably an inch and a half or so. I probably cut that much off. I'm um, right where it gets really thick. So anyways, let me light the grill and I'll show you what we're doing there. Okay, so on the griddle we have asparagus and I put three tablespoons of oil. You don't need much, just enough to coat it so it doesn't stick. So I, I used my measuring spoon and used three total tablespoons. And then I also added pink salt um, and that was it. So I'm gonna close the, grit, the, the lid and we'll be back when it's time to turn them. Okay, so the asparagus is ready to come off. It was about 15 minutes or so. Um, it's gonna vary on obviously your grill, but I cooked them on about medium at the time. Uh, they're down to low now um, for about 15, 20 minutes. Um, the next. Okay, so it is ready to come out. It sat on about 15 minutes for the pressure release, the natural release, and there is the finished product. So we're gonna just pull this out and stick it in the fridge. Um, you want to make sure the center is set like that, like I jiggled it and nothing jiggled. That's a great sign. <laughs> so now we're just going to take the handles that we made and carefully take it out. Just cool off in there. <laughs> it gets real dicey getting it out. <laughs> so it cools off pretty quickly. The main thing is you want to keep it level. Sorry, I got his hands in the way, but there you go. And then we just put it on the, the baking rack and then we're going to let it cool and we'll stick it in the fridge. And then it'll be ready to enjoy. Success! So there how, is how perfect and how easy it is to make a Swedish keto cheesecake using an Instant Pot. Um, so this is going to cool off a little bit and then we're going to stick it in the fridge. Okay, so we're going to fix our plate, and there is the grilled asparagus and the finished product, the actually fully cooked meatloaf now. Yum, yum, yum. So, anyways, I'm going to fix my plate, and I'll show you what the finished product looks like. And my kids do eat asparagus, but they also <laughs> have some garlic green beans, so they eat a, a, a wide variety. Okay, so I have four and a quarter ounces of grilled asparagus and six ounces cooked of my delicious meatloaf. Okay, so take a look at that cheesecake. All in all, that cheesecake um, had 14 total carbs. Um, if you were calculating net carbs, it would only be two net carbs. Um, so that calculation makes me a little over today for my total carbs. Um, I ended up being 22 for the day. Um, lunch was uh, three eggs with, uh, you know, cooked in the butter with a side of bacon. Um, and then lunch was, I'm sorry, dinner was my meatloaf. I've made this many times, so it was already logged in. Um, so it makes it real easy to log, you know, servings and know what to have ahead of time. So always add that as your recipes if you're going to do something more than once. Um, there's my asparagus cooked in the oil. 
My coffee was unflavored collagen with two tablespoons of heavy cream and with black along with black coffee um that is also logged in as a recipe because i have that every day so it just makes this part so easy and then the keto swedish cheesecake actually made eight servings which i thought was a pretty large serving so next time i'm probably going to try to get 10 servings out of that cheesecake um it was a little filling so um i feel like you could easily get more <laughs> Um, but overall, that my my carbs for the day came from the Swedish cheesecake. But I wanted to show you that it's possible to find a total carb dessert that actually works within your macros. Um, I would have just had a smaller serving and I would have been on par, but I'm really not worried about that. <laughs> so anyways, congrats on making it through week one. And I will see you at week two on Monday. This is Jess. You're watching Keto Rewind.